Today we have another super, super duper helpful lesson. <laughs> Very helpful. It's, I will not fear to look within today. I will not fear to look within today. Such a good one. So helpful to learn that, to even realize we actually have fear to look within. There is a fear to look within because there is a fear about what we can find if we look within. So there is a constant avoidance going on. And Jesus says in the Course somewhere, somewhere else, I think, what if you looked within and saw no sin? What if you looked within and saw no sin? And then he explains that's actually the case. When you look within, you, you're not going to see sin. But the belief is there is so much darkness within. So you're not going to look within. Instead, you're going to put it outside. on other people, situations, circumstances. But today, we're going to practice to look within. And we can see it as opening a door within. Or however it works for you, you can visualize looking within is looking within it's not really looking within a person it's looking within the mind and it's very much sinking inward or settling stilling the mind and being welcoming say i want to see what's i want to see what i believe it may not be what I expect. Just want to be open and see. Look within. Within me is it eternal innocence. Within me is eternal innocence because it is God's will that it be there forever and forever. I, his son, whose will is limitless as his own, can will no change in this. For to deny my father's will is to deny my own. To look within is but to find my will as God created it and as it is. I fear to look within because I think I made another will that is not true and made it real. Yet it has no effects. Within me is the holiness of God. Within me is the memory of him. The step I take today, my father, is my sure release from idle dreams of sin. Your altar stands serene and undefiled. It is the holy altar to myself. And there I find my true identity. The step I take today, my father, is my sure release from idle dreams of sin. Even that sentence can allow to see where we have had some issues, clashes, projections, attacks. This is what we're going to be releasing today. Idle dreams of sin. Your altar stands serene and undefiled. It is the holy altar to myself. And there I find my true identity. We're so pure. We're so pure when we look inside. So we will do this now. 
we will experience this purity, this innocence. So as you meditate, just try to release any thoughts about form, any thoughts about tomorrow or yesterday or even about the current situation. Just allow yourself to let go. You can see it as letting yourself, your true self, come to you, come forth. You can just relax and close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And let any thoughts just pass by. And if there are thoughts about worry, just let them go. Just let them pass like clouds. Say, I'm safe. God is with me. If we believe that we are sinful, it can get quite messy. It can seem to get quite messy. I think we can say the sin is preference. Sin is, yeah preferring something over something else. And this is finding yourself on the timeline. We started watching Mr. Nobody last night. And he constantly finds himself in, he has, there are three different life scenarios that happen simultaneously. And the scenes throw him the movie throws him in between those scenarios. And it's almost like a what if, like what if he had chosen one thing over another, what would happen? And I think that is the mess of sin. <laughs> It's like he experiences each one as real, exactly like we do with our lives. We experience it as real. And it's very concentrated, specific. And it's because the mind dreams it up that way, prefers it that way, one thing over another, and sometimes it's suffering. Like in some of those lives, he was like feeling like he thought he got everything he wanted, but he was so empty. He got the pool, got the wealth, the two children, the very big, nice house. But he was completely blank, like, like he, 
He didn't know who he was. And that's what it is with our lives. We find ourselves somehow, somewhere in a specific scenario based on preference. Even if it doesn't seem really good, it's been preferred. But this practice looking within will loosen us from the form. from even being located in one point in time. We'll get more eternal. We'll get more feeling we are everywhere. We're feeling we are very expansive, expanded. And I think step by step, that's going to come in, you know, the more we look, the more we forgive, the more we look within. The more we love the cat. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the word allow just came to me last night or this morning, allowance. It's that that word that there is no control in allowance, just allowing things to be as they are, as forgiveness, not needing to change. Because in the movie, he changes scenarios. He finds out yeah, he finds that he he is thrown between. He changes scenarios. Our truth is actually changeless. This acceptance of what is and allowance of what is is very. It's forgiveness. It feels really nice to meditate on this lesson, to find the innocence within. Did you did you find your innocence? Do you find your innocence when you meditate? How does it feel? God's will that it is there forever and forever. Muna. Hi. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Yeah, what a big lesson today. Um, My heart is pounding. I can see my innocence. I could always see my innocence, but it's this back and forth that was seemingly always there. But um, I did see that it's a choice. And as, as soon as I said it, you actually said it as well the choice or a preference for staying with the projection with what the mind made i'm starting to see the attachment to it like it's it's like my little baby and i'm i don't want to let go of it and it's costing me so much it's costing me peace of mind and it's very subtle these levels of the mind are very subtle where these preferences are happening because the massive choices 
And, uh, but when you said Mr. Nobody, Mr. Nobody is like my touchstone. It's, it's the call for me to acknowledge the quantum nature of reality rather than the reality that I'm choosing to stay in on, on the timeline. Mr. Nobody is a massive movie for me. And I saw it before I started the course and I kept seeing it with David and you mentioned it now, it's always there. It's, um, it, it spoke to me so much because my experience is like that. But when I put myself on the timeline, my mind seems so broken and I seem so broken and my heart seems so broken. Yeah. So it's okay. really great to see that that mm -hmm. contrast. I'm choosing. I'm choosing yeah. where to be. But it's okay to heal, to allow these feelings. Because just when you said that it's a big, big sadness for you. And to keep allowing all those waves of emotion come up for this this experience of this life, you know, just mourn it, allow this mourning, this sadness. Yes, I'm getting in touch with this deep wound. And uh, today I have my nephew come and it's huge for me. It's I've been so worked up and unsettled. And it's just a reminder of my family experiences and the heartbrokenness of being abandoned, abused and then abandoned. It's like this cutoff of relationship with my parents, so wounding but also being assaulted is deeply wounding. It's like, I'm so unloved. Like, how can I be so unloved? If you, I perceived attack as real. I still perceive it as real. It's in my consciousness. I can't deny it. In the physical, I was attacked and I still experience myself in the physical. But that that moment of concluding, I must be so unloved to be attacked like that by my own parents. Um, yeah, it's still, there's still some deny, there's still not a desire not to see it in full because it's just so harsh. So it is harsh, I know, but it's good to see perspective too, you know, like. It is this in this dream of separation we have lived many lifetimes. We have been the abuser too, the one that attacks. So I think it's helpful to have that perspective and then allow those feelings still for the healing. The feelings when you release the story, you can allow those feelings to move through and then. Yeah, find yourself now, you know, you're going to meet the nephew. Just ask, spirit, how can I be truly helpful? Because you can ask how to extend love right now. You know, with all this, with the history, with everything you have in your awareness, you can still be a very clear vessel for Spirit's love. Maybe you and him watch Mr. Nobody together, or you know, or maybe something sweet will will occur. You know, just you, just you being connected with spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting you say that because. I always have a lovely time with them. And he has a little baby and she's gorgeous and we all go, ooh, with it. But it's the 
thoughts about the meeting. It's always not the meeting. It's always the thoughts about the meeting. That's what I've been noticing for a decade now, where it doesn't go away. It's not actually meeting them and being with them. That's easy. It's the thought of meeting them as if something's going to happen, something's going to happen. And I think it's this, this denial, because I haven't released the attack from my consciousness completely. It's like the same boogeyman is going to come and get me because I'm still denying that I have already been gotten. I have already been, it's already happened. Yeah, and I come very close to acknowledging that it's just happened. And then I get distracted or, you know, the ego brings distractions. So it's just, there's a tiny bit of denial of accepting it. <sighs> in my consciousness so there's always thoughts of fear of exposure yeah of being exposed mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah so that that is that is shame so so mm. thank god you're healing that and you're attracting whatever is needed for that healing so even now with him coming for for a visit you you're in touch with the shame or well, someone can find out something or just the shame of, of being. And I think just showing up with seeing that, feeling that in you is very healing, becoming aware, you know, and still the Holy Spirit can use this meeting, can be with you. And, and help you heal this. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Solway. Good morning. Good morning. Um, You mentioned something about preferences, and and um, and right now I'm I'm, I'm struggling with uh, this house in in Venezuela that I kind of lost my heart to, and I can I am aware that um, The difficulty of, of, of me actually expressing and saying and holding on to, yeah, I really like that place. Um, and then I can see that I kind of come, it, it feels like a, a swap, you know, it feels like I go to one side and then one side and then one side and I can see that in form I, I need to let it go. I, I do that many times a day, give it over to spirit and say, what? I don't know if that's where we're going to live, but there's this, this, and I get confused. I get confused. Is it okay that I love this place? Part of me wants to, no, 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 this is wrong. It's just, yeah, the experience going in there and try actually see a place that feels loved and cared for that that's actually what touched my heart and um, I don't know maybe, maybe I need a place like that I don't know yeah allow what you feel you're feeling you like the place in Venezuela that's totally fine to like a place and but then to still see is this the guidance is this helpful and that's going to be made clear you know maybe it is maybe it is that place yes. so to keep allowing and staying open the, the, yeah. yeah there's this fear of actually allowing that because the fear is if it's not going to be then it was wrong or something like that yeah The ego yeah. is what's wrong, like, even yeah. when it's right, they want to make it wrong. It's, 
when it's yeah when it's strong it's gonna make you feel wrong and it's just <laughs> ego is wrong in us ego is the belief in wrong in us but the belief in rightness can be there the belief in peace regardless of what the outcome is now because it's just this investment in the outcome that makes you fearful what if it's wrong or maybe I shouldn't want it if it is wrong but is this yeah investment in the outcome so yeah yeah I think it can get clear soon for you guys just Just relax with this process. Yeah, the process feels a little like this. Suddenly I can see it's it's the investment in outcome and then I feel peace again. And then suddenly there's all this anxiety. So it just really swaps like that right now. Like, and the time issue comes in again. And I think, oh, we need to, you know, we need to find out. You know, there is an addiction to problems because it's yeah. like, no matter, even if this gets solved, then it's going to be something else next time, you know, that the mind goes into, oh, this is, and can be anxious about. And then there's a next and the next and the next. And it's just an addiction to feeling there is a problem and anxiety. Instead of, you can, you can, you can relax and you can see, no, there are possibilities here and the way is going to be shown and I trust, you know, let that be your practice instead of an opportunity to be anxious, you know. And I think it's a whole new way of being and I think it is this inner trauma, this inner, yeah, trauma that is constantly like, actually trying to get your attention very loud. Hi, hi, <laughs> I'm afraid. And, and for you, your, your right mind, you can say, I see you, I hear you, but I'm not gonna let you rule. I'm not gonna let you be the decision maker here. I'm, I'm here, I'm grown up. It is safe, there is no trauma happening. I'm at peace and there is safety here. You, I think you need to work with this trauma because it is very anxious in you a lot of times. It has nothing to do with which house to live in because it will just find something else to latch on to once that's resolved, you know? Yeah. If you uh, focus I, I... more on, on healing this, on caring, or this loud screaming child that is like, that, that thinks there is an issue that will be healing, I think. And, and trust that actually the form is going to be the right form of things. It's gonna be shown. Do you feel this? Do you feel resonating? A lot, yeah, and um, yeah, I was aware, I am aware, this is just a presenting image at the moment, it um, could be anything. Yeah. yeah, the birds are so peaceful over there, <laughs> sweet, yeah. And I get the contrast I feel when I I do look in and I do f find the calm and then suddenly the anxiety is there again. It's just, maybe it's kind of helpful for me to see what it is I'm doing. Yeah, it is kind of helpful, yeah. <laughs> to myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very helpful to see what you do to yourself. Thank you.
Hey, anybody else? Lord? There you go. Okay. I was thinking about the movie this morning and I um, I could see how I am kind of like Mr. Nobody. I had the I had the fancy house. I had the fancy car. I had the special relationship, and yet my mind was addicted to chaos, kind of like you were telling Savi. And so I had to get away from it all to find healing. And because it's it's one thing after another when you take care of one situation then another one starts and then you take care of that and then another one starts and it's 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 never over so i had to try to figure out like he helen shuckman said uh, there has to be another way so I left everything behind to come here to find the other way, to find the healing that my soul so longs for. So that movie, although we haven't finished it, does resonate with me a lot. Because he was empty. I mean, he had it all and he was still empty. Yeah, extremely empty. His eyes, when he was sitting by the pool, he was like, what, what is this? <laughs> yeah. He didn't even want his wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a beautiful, beautiful step you took. I agree. It was hard. Yeah, but when it calls, when the truth calls, we nothing can stop us, you know. Sometimes we can procrastinate, but that's never helpful. So I, yeah, I mean, I did the same thing. Yeah. 16, 16 years ago. I have what the world calls success, you know, but my soul doesn't. My heart doesn't feel successful mm -hmm. yet. But I know that it's within reach. And like the lesson says today, mm -hmm. I will not be afraid to go within. So beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going towards true success. Yeah, no striving required. Yeah, I love uh, Jim Carrey's line, like, because he seemed to, you know, also become successful successful actor and rich famous but he he just said yeah he said i wish everyone could get rich and famous to see that it's not about getting rich and famous now he's very very spiritual but i didn't have the pull 
I will. <laughs> I didn't have the pool and the fancy house. That I didn't have. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh. <laughs> Maybe someday, but I think healing is the priority. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> we had a pool in our previous house, and now we don't have a pool. But I haven't missed it one moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Flor. <laughs> it's very good to have you here with us. It feels very good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're so willingly just taking everything in. I feel, you know, for you, this is like a, maybe a strange place in a sense of, you know, it's very different living in community. You have, yeah, had everything. You have been the one in control of your life. And here you have given yourself over to this life in community. In the first few days, it's like, what is this? What is this? Yes. What are those people doing? <laughs> Just letting all emotions out on the table, the lunch table, and no, no one's holding back. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a new experience for me that I've never had to experience before in my life. So I have no experience with it no at all. Reference point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. It's just getting out of our comfort zone is so delicious <laughs> <laughs> to me. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Of course. Thanks for listening. Anybody else over there before you mute your mic? Or anyone else here in the Zoom room? Osa? Good morning. Good morning. I just uh, saw that um, the lesson I'm not afraid to dive in or today I go within or <clears throat> and yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah, I'm going. I don't. But when you said that I'm innocent, it's like, oh, <laughs> I'm much more prepared, obviously, to see all the darkness and all the craziness and how I believe all my thoughts and that was to totally fine with me but when you said I'm innocent it's like no nah. so there is a belief there obviously that yeah so I just wanted to share that uh, I didn't know that 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 was the case actually. I don't believe I'm innocent, mostly, obviously. Mm. It sounds helpful. Sound like to see that. Mm. That you have believed that you're not innocent. Yeah. And a tiny bit of sadness and <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've quoted this line a few times. Jesus says, You believe that there is such darkness in you that if someone would knew would know the truth about you, they would recoil as if from a poisonous snake, you know. 
He's saying that's what each one believes about themselves. That's why there is such a defense. You have to defend the self-concept. Sometimes even defending. Sometimes I, people say like, I'm not guilty, like in a very defensive way. So there must be a belief that you know, I must defend. The, you know, because there is an obvious belief in guilt if there is a defense. Mm. So, yeah. And yesterday, I saw that. Um, you remember I told you I have something going on in my body that makes me not be able to work, or I tried to for a year, managed half time only. And um, I, I could see in relationship to that, that I, I, I believe that it's my fault somehow that, you know, I created it with stressing and so on. And then a friend said to me yesterday, that was like, you're, you're the least stressful person I have known. <laughs> yeah. and I just had tears coming up what <laughs> so yeah hmm. I blame myself somehow or it's my fault or hmm. you know I should be able to do it differently or better or we just become free of this hmm. Hmm. yeah so I Thank you to the situation because I was crying and I thought this is obviously <laughs> something. And, and now I had the same experience with you here this morning. So what is it that, what, yeah. So why am I innocent then? I don't, can you say something about that? Why are we all innocent? It's because we are Christ. So... The only problem is, yeah, we, you know, we think we we are responsible for the illusion. And so we tell ourselves, I made those mistakes and therefore I'm guilty. I made bad choices. And my life is a little bit messed up because of that. But the thing is, and it's, I mean, I just take Jesus' word, you know, he says, you're not responsible for the illusion. You're not responsible for the error. Only for accepting the correction, which is the atonement. The fact that you are innocent, the fact that you're free, and one with God. And for me, I don't know if I can explain it, but I can feel it. That I can also, I've also felt those feelings of feeling guilty for her for something in the in the form in the dream in the past but then to take in that message that i am not guilty for the past i'm not responsible for it for past choices they are they are in the script they are they played out so because the script is written past tense written 
it's over. Hmm. Yeah, that feels lovely. <laughs> yeah. Very peaceful. Yeah. It can be so helpful to join with someone like you did yesterday, a companion that says, but I don't see you like that at all. And this idea you've had about yourself, you can start to question. Mm. And I think there can be some deep healing in seeing where you have put your guilt, you know, as an event in the past something where you maybe have been beating yourself up for years it should have been different i should have done something different but to say but i couldn't have done anything different because this mm. is script this mm. is exactly what was supposed to happen because mm. it did happen that way and in reality it didn't happen at all <laughs> You keep saying that. What? Yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> it was just a dream. It was just the illusion. Like all the weird nighttime dreams we can have, you know, it's the same. When we wake up, we realize that was just a dream, you know, and that, and that's the same with the daytime dreaming. And then we discovered the dream within the dream. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we can say, I'm not going to buy into it. I can observe it. I can detach from it. I can forgive it, but I'm not going to try to change it or fix it or put myself in it as a character that mm. is wrong. I still, I, I think I work very much on, you know, like Inception there because I want to plant only the good. I'm working so hard to get that good Inception in my head <laughs> that I have sort of hang on to that belief instead of. leveling up kind of hmm. I think making a good dream you mean yeah 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 but you don't really have to plant a true idea within your mind the truth is true mm -hmm. when the dream falls away that's all that is there that's all that's ever been there so when the gets peeled away then or seen through or disappears when I see then then I get the innocent yeah yeah or the truth, or the whatever you want to, you know, that state that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah, that's why we just need to put on the altar those places in us where we think we're guilty mm. or responsible. Mm. That's it. And when we have done all that, when we have put all of them on the altar, and we have released all of them, yeah, the innocence shines. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Asa.
I'm so relaxed. I can't even move my arms to say thank you. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just going to turn the mic on. Off, I mean. <laughs> Finish with a short quote. The mind that serves the Holy Spirit is unlimited forever. In all ways, beyond the laws of time and space, unbound by any preconceptions, and with strength and power to do whatever it is asked, Attack thoughts cannot enter such a mind because it has been given to the source of love and fear can never enter in a mind that has attached itself to loving. It rests in, it rests in God. And who can be afraid who lives in innocence and only loves? Who can be afraid who lives in innocence and only loves? That is so nice. <laughs> we need no defensiveness. We can live in innocence, and that is a love, love through us. Who can be afraid who lives in innocence? I think we'll end the session here unless someone has had something on your heart that you that you were waiting to share. Can I just ask Jenny, where was that quote from? Yeah, it's from less, Lesson 199, Paragraph 2. Oh, okay. Yeah. 199. 199, yeah. And yeah, I'm sitting with something and not sure if it's to share or not to share, but that really felt like a prompt, so I, I will. Good, follow your prompts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, I was I was up very early this morning because um, I had something on my heart and um, I thought it had cleared last night, but it obviously hadn't. It was it was in my mind this morning, and um, I actually did a levels of mind, and it was just to to really find what is this, you know, why am I so upset, you know, because. I seem to have upset another body. Um, why is it affecting me so much? And there was a few, you know, when it comes down to the question about, I can't remember how it's posed, but it was about what's really underneath this. And um, there was a few different things. And it's like, no, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. And it really was that that desperate fear um, of yeah it's too dangerous actually to be myself to be who I am it's too dangerous I can't do that and it was it was such a, a beautiful thing to see in that place and it's like that's not true and and what you've talked about that innocence and and that's what I could feel in the moment. It's like, oh, maybe, you know, like it is safe. Maybe it's, it, you know, I'm in the right place to explore this people-pleasing behaviour and, you know, wanting to be nice and wanting to be liked and, and all this. And, um, yeah. <sighs> mm 
How freeing. How freeing to just show up the way you are and not needing to change it. Yeah, because this, what was going on was like this feeling like I've got to adapt, I've got to change, you know, I've got to be a, a self-improved person. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> Glad you discovered this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was the discovery that actually maybe just maybe it's not true none of that is true um and I don't know how that plays out and I don't need to know how that plays out it's just that sense of okay this has come up for a purpose it's it's not to to go back into some kind of hiding again no. it's, it's stay true yeah yeah very good. I see the choir of angels like cheerleaders. Like, <laughs> and cheer you on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. It's just, yeah. It's been an incredible journey, you know, like to, but to start to arrive in it, you know, that's, I, I think I made up a story when I was very young, you know, because I, a whole group of people that I hung out with at school um, all fell out with me because I stood up for myself and it's like, oh, obviously I made the story far earlier than that, but, you know, that that was, I can see that. It's like, yeah, I concluded, you know, if, if, if I'm the nice girl and I'm this and I'm that, then I can, yeah, I don't have to ever be isolated again. But it didn't work. It's never worked. So it's like, yeah, come back, come back. <laughs> yeah, what a helpful discovery. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, the peeling off of so much layers that have been being cl clung to. <laughs> yeah. It's that sense of like, this is kind of like, this is a cornerstone and there was so much underneath it hiding. It's like so much, I can't, you know, it was just like. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, we heard you crying loud in your room and I was like, hmm, gonna need to tell her that nothing is wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I felt it somewhere. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs>